This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Despite all the complaints about there not being enough public fast chargers, the EV charging network in the U.S. continues to expand. Bloomberg reports that 704 new public EV fast chargers were installed in the second quarter, up 9% over the first quarter. The U.S. now has 9,000 public fast chargers, and at the current pace, they'll outnumber gas stations in eight years. But that could probably happen even sooner because the installation rate has been accelerating. EV charging operators will spend $6.1 billion on the charging infrastructure this year, double what it did last year. And by the end of the decade, that's expected to double again. Another area that's expected to grow significantly is battery recycling. According to the Argonne National Lab, battery recycling capacity in the U.S. was about 35,000 tons in 2023. And in the next two to four years, another 76,000 tons of capacity will come online, bringing the total to 111,000 tons per year. We don't know how many EV batteries that represents because of different sizes and weights, but it's estimated to be a six-digit number of battery packs. As we reported last week, Jaguar is dropping the XE, XF, F-Type, I-Pace, and E-Pace from its lineup because it can't make money on them. Only the F-Pace will remain as it plans to go all electric next year. And remember, the I-Pace and the E-Pace are made by Magnus Steyr, and it will stop making them in December. This is another blow for Magna, which also just lost the Fisker Ocean. So now Automotive News reports that Magna is in talks with Chinese automakers to build vehicles for them. But beyond that, Magna currently produces the Mercedes G-Class, BMW Z4, and Toyota Supra at its factory in Austria. Tesla could give up on its 4680 battery cells, according to a report in the information. It cites three sources who say earlier in the year, Elon Musk wanted the team working on the cells to scale up dry coating of the cathode, which would allow it to eliminate a step from the battery making process and cut costs. And then more recently, it says that Musk also wants a solution to a problem where the batteries can collapse on themselves while in use. But if there's not a fix by the end of the year, Tesla could give up on trying to scale production of the cells. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tejin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. We've got good news out of Europe. New car sales in June were up 3.6%, though the results varied a lot by country. Automakers sold 1.3 million cars, trucks, and vans in the EU, the Scandinavian countries, and the UK. And all the growth came from hybrids, which were up 24%. Gasoline and diesel cars lost sales, while sales of PHEVs plummeted 13.6%, and EV sales were flat and saw their market share drop to 14.4%, down from 15.1%. Volvo reported its second quarter earnings, and the numbers look good. Sales of new cars by the Swedish automaker were up 15%, and that drove strong earnings. Even though revenue was down 1%, Volvo posted a record operating profit, and its net profit was up a whopping 60%. Volvo's goal is to have BEVs account for 50% of its sales by the end of next year, and it's about halfway there. BEVs accounted for 26% of sales in the second quarter, and they hit 20% gross margins, largely thanks to higher sales volume and falling raw material prices for batteries. Volkswagen is launching a new EV sub-brand in China called IDUNYX, which we think is pronounced Uniques, and its first model is a fastback SUV. The company says it was created at its new Innovation and Development Center in eastern China, but really, this is only a slightly modified version of the Cooper Taviscan, which is based on VW's MEB platform. The only real differences we see between the two 
are some mild styling changes to the lower front and rear fascias, new lighting signatures, and VW badges. That's it. Even the interiors are the same. It does get its new in-house developed electric motor, which sends about 280 horsepower to the rear wheels, or nearly 340 horsepower to all four wheels when it's combined with an additional motor on the front axle. Both are fed by a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack that returns up to 621 kilometers or 385 miles of range on the Chinese test cycle. Car News China reports that the model will start just below $30,000. And VW says the ID Uniques brand will also get an SUV and a couple of sedans, while the rest of the VW brand in China will get 12 new ID EVs, 6 new PHEVs, and 12 new ICEs by the end of the decade. BMW is working with a startup called Deep Drive to launch a new kind of electric motor. In a conventional motor, the stator moves either an internal or external rotor. But Deep Drive came up with a way for the stator to move both rotors at the same time, or what it calls a dual rotor concept. It claims the motors are the most efficient on the market and offers cost savings, and that they can be used for either an in-wheel setup or as a more centralized power unit. BMW has been helping to test the in-wheel motors and says the next step is to test various versions in real-world driving in actual BMW vehicles. Deep Drive shows three versions on its website that vary in size from 19 to 20 inches, in weight from 32 to 37 kilograms, and output from 150 to 250 kilowatts and 1,500 to 2,400 newton meters. That's about 70 to 80 pounds, 200 to 335 horsepower, and 860 to 1,400 pound-feet of torque. But BMW's not the only one. Deep Drive says it's working with eight of the top 10 automotive manufacturers in the world and hopes to start series testing in the next year or so. BYD has got the pedal to the metal. Car News China reports that in the next three years, it's going to make its proprietary ADAS technology standard equipment on cars in the $20,000 range. That includes automatic and valet parking, blind spot detection, automatic emergency braking, adaptive headlamps, lane departure warning, rear cross traffic braking, and door opening warnings of oncoming traffic. BYD says it gets new tech onto the market by avoiding working on concepts and focusing on productionizing instead. And then it works on iterations for rapid upgrades. That brings us to the end of this show. But don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours at 3 p.m. Eastern Time today to see how a company called PureForge can make brake rotors last the life of a vehicle. I hope to see you there. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC, where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. And by Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. Trusting tires designed for the long haul. Because you'll always go the distance for friends. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza Tires with an 80,000 mile limited warranty.
Michigan is leading the charge in mobility and innovation, and I can't think of a better state to be in.